Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm not sure how many surfers there are amongst you out here today, but can you tell me where we are? I guess you may not have to be a surfer. If you're an explorer, you may also know as well. But good morning to you all. I'll just scan here one more time for you. We'll have a look at the surf break here, see if any of you all can pick this up, and then we will say our serenity prayer. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Your will, not ours, be done. Amen. Good morning to every one of you. I'm not too sure how many of you know where we are this morning, um, but we are at South Point. This is a surf break called South Point. This is one of the breaks I actually learned to surf on. I started at Dover, and uh, this is the place I used to come when Dover really didn't have a surf. Um, we used to go to Drill Hall as well too, but mainly South Point was one of our favorite breaks. And that's because we actually used to camp out here as well. Give you a little bit more on that in a few minutes. Good morning to you all. Now this surf swell has dropped a lot. It was predicted to be a 2.5 meter swell this morning, um, going into this afternoon and then it started to drop off. However, um, the winds have changed direction a little bit. I don't know if that has had an, an impact on the swell, which is very possible. Um, but as you can see, it's glassed off a lot more than it has been. We're seeing a lot of the spray blowing back off the top of the swell itself and that would indicate that the winds are more offshore this morning um, than they have been. Normally, um, swells on the south coast tend to do a lot better when these winds are side shore. Um, that way then it blows them around and it points itself up to the southeastern section. Beautiful, beautiful place. Now we've um, done a <coughs> surf break to Barbados from here with Alan Burt walking us through this reef already so we're not doing too much talking about it. This is mainly a left. Um, when it, I know from days gone by when I used to surf here, this was an incredible left. I haven't really seen it for many years. I haven't surfed this break too, too often recently. I would say not maybe for about 10 years now. Um, but originally when out here, it used to really crank. And I'm talking about the days when the South Coast used to really break. Not like now where it gets an occasional swell. I'm talking about consistent breaks. We've really seen that white outside section where the um, wave had just broken. And slightly above there would have been one line. And I'm talking about maybe... 10 to 15 foot swells just peeling and coming across out there and then you used to get a, a wave breaking in the center of our camera now and uh, working its way right through there were about three different peaks that worked its way through and you would end up right down inside of here <clears throat> now this break is termed as a risky break because if you lose your board out here it will more likely get destroyed on the cliffs as you can see it's very very sharp razor sharp conditions getting out from here um, there's a very little small beach just in in front of us here that i'll show you and this is where you would normally push off from. I know in days gone by when we used to surf here a lot, we used to actually walk around the corner and push off from above. But coral real, real sharp there. So, you know, you'd only go around there if absolutely necessary. Coming back in, you would either come in here or you would come in at some steps that are a little further down in the wall, um, just beyond where this guy is warming up. Still good conditions, still a good surf. So I know that a lot of guys would be hungry for this. I mean, on the normal, on normal days, you will find maybe 20, 30 guys out here quite comfortably and quite easily. It's still a little bit early and the guys have had um, a few waves for the last few days. So they're now being a little more selective on the tight conditions and stuff, I would imagine. But beautiful, beautiful place. This morning, Barbados, hazy again, but stunning. Um, you can see that there is a, a sun beginning to come around the corner. We're not going to see it from where we are. As I said, we have something planned different for you today. We, um, as we said before, that we're going to take you to as much accessible areas in the island, not as much all of the accessible areas in the island and that would mean showing you here which we have not done in a live video um, walking along the cliffs here going up in the direction of silver sands very very difficult uh, very tedious in front of a lot of personal a lot of private homes and stuff so we're going to stay away from that a little bit i'm going to show you from the roadside what i like to talk to you about how here used to be and how it is now um, as you can see the guys are now beginning to actually come out all the fellas are enjoying themselves get ready for good sir morning fellas have a good day huh? cool man now, so Point has always been a real hangout spot. Now, I will tell you the names that come to mind now, the family names that come to mind now. And if I forget any, please uh, accept my apology. The St. John's, the Talmas, the Hunts, the Fields. There are people that I grew up with surfing. There are people that used to live at South Point and used to be known as the South Point uh, Posse or Group. Now, uh, you know, they used to always be here. And also, I'll even throw in a Roger Miller in there as well because he lives just directly on this surf break here in the house behind us. I probably miss a few names, but don't mind. They're the ones that come to mind right now. When I grew up, 
they're the guys that you used to grow up with. That was in our teens. Um, you know, the Talmas and stuff. They used to always hear Brian. He's gone on to um, different types of stuff. He still surfs, but he now does stop surfing. Um, he's, um, you know, still in the circuit. Most of those guys still surf. Um, you know, all of us are approaching. Well, I've approached and also past 60. I'm on 60. But most of those guys are not kind of age group, you know, 50s and 60s. And you will find any time there's a swell, they will come out here because these guys love this break. So Point has always, always had this thoroughfare down to the beach section. Um, I would say uh, it's always been a vacant lot, but it made it a public thoroughfare now down to the beach. Originally, you didn't have to worry about here because you could get down to this beach in many, many areas. I'll just show you in a second. Look at that beautiful sunrise, people. A gorgeous, gorgeous day in Barbados. Now I said we're going to offer you something different today, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some neighborhood walking. Because I want to cover these two shore break areas, these two beach break areas, or sorry, reef break areas, and I want to be able to let you see some in the neighborhood as well. Now, this house uh, has always been here, as far as I remember, and the one above. But beyond that, above that, with all the lots and stuff, are there were no homes. I remember actually camping on that pasture uh, with my friends Ashley and Trot many, many weekends. We used to bring up a tent, camp out there, and surf the entire weekend. Now, when out here it gets really good conditions, you will not find a park, I would say, within close to a quarter mile from here. Everywhere here will have cars on one side, of course, because we do pay respect to the roads. And it will go right around this corner. Maybe, maybe not a quarter mile, maybe about an eighth of a mile, especially that direction will be a shorter area because there are a lot of homes and a lot of roads that come out up there. So you won't find much parking there, but where you will find parking is right up this road, almost to the road that runs parallel to where we are and right down this road, way beyond where we can see right now in our, in our view. That is when it's really pumping. You'll find all the guys here, especially on a weekend. Uh, this morning is very light. As I said before, a lot of guys maybe surfed out. They've had a good few days of surfing. And when I say surfed out, I don't mean they're not surfing today. They're just picking their waves and their tides because, you know, before everybody would have rushed out here like a headless chicken, caught everything they could possibly catch. Now they're gonna be more selective because they've had a few days under their belt. Now this neighborhood, I remember it, well, all my life. Many, many places along this cliff here had no homes. There were some scattered, but very few. And I remember that when I was a young teen, very young teen. I started surfing at 16. I guess that's late in comparison to the guys now, because a lot of guys start surfing at six and seven and eight. In those days, uh, surfing was a beach bum sport. No one took it seriously. No one saw a future in it. If you were surfing, you were noted as having um, certain delights that a lot of people didn't accept that has changed now considerably surfing is a competitive sport it's actually an olympic sport now uh you know it is recognized throughout the world as being one of the major sports water sports um all over the globe right now uh the brazilians are the ones who right now are forming all of the big run right now in the top top of the field but it is international competitions all over we have quite a few guys or quite a few people that are competing right now there are two people that are competing it's chelsea Tua. And then there's also, of course, Mr. Burke himself, who's doing very well on the circuit. Didn't do too, too well in France, but he certainly surfed beautifully in some of the heats. This is a magnificent home. Now, this um, is opposite a lot. So I don't know if the lot will ever be developed or if these folks have actually bought the lot. But this is up for rental. So if you're interested in staying in this general area, you can certainly rent this accommodation here. Um, beautiful views of the ocean. As I said, it's opposite a vacant lot. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to be developed. However, one thing I'd like to point out here is, as you'll see, lots of coral heads right here on the surface. So finding foundations along this cliff, this is the actual coral cliff itself with just a little bit of surface soil on it. So to, to build a serious structure out here, you don't have to dig miles deep to look for foundation. It is right here, as you can clearly see. These forts would just have to basically level off. They wouldn't even have to dig it. It's so beautiful right now. I hope that these couple of areas stay you know, open to the sea. Because if you're driving through this neighborhood, you don't see the ocean too often now. Um, that's because of all the development that's gone on over the years. Now, this is what I used to call my power walking circuit. When I used to live Atlantic Shores by my sister's area, I used to walk this place every morning, get this time 4 a.m. I'd be out here at 4 a.m. I would usually get up at 3.15. So it is not that my 3.15 is a usual, or 3.30 is a usual, sorry, an unusual thing for me. That's what I basically be doing all my life. I have always been a morning person. Um, we're just doing the live vlogs now at the time that I would be out power walking. 
or just enjoying nature because this is the time I find peace. I used to walk out here in pitch black, didn't see anyone whatsoever. Got a few little war injuries out here because as you can see the surface has some holes and stuff and when you're walking in the darkness, well you can appreciate you go down sometimes. Now that, as I told you all before, I'm an Olympic trained personnel. So when I power walk, I am an Olympic trained power walker. And at that time in the morning, I don't have my companion with me. He's at home resting and sleeping and being lazy as usual. He only comes out just after sun rises. You know, he doesn't like to come out too often. So all you all that praise him for being such a nice person, etc., etc. Remember, he has his limitations. He's not like me. I'm an all-rounder 24 hours a day. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. Lots of lovely homes up here. There are lots of rental signs all over the place. Um, you know, I know when these are all resided in by their owners. However, a lot of them are actually rentals now. You can do long-term rentals up here. Um, you can do this one-year passport and get a place up here quite easily. Beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. Very quiet and peaceful. Now, I told you to bring your canine repellents or your dog treats. So far, I don't know why none of them have spoken to me as yet. I'm not too sure. Maybe because they all know I'm friendly. I don't have my companion who they do not like. He's not here today. Not at the moment anyhow, but I'm sure he'll make an appearance somewhere. Beautiful homes. As I said, many of these places were not here when I grew up in this section. We used to drive along this cliff here and actually watch the waves and determine where we were going to go. Which break, Before we even got to South Point, we would determine which peak was going to be good today. Take bets as to who was going to have the best day out. Now this roundabout, typical roundabout, anywhere in the world. Why am I mentioning it? Only because when we were teenagers, this would be full of car tire rats because we used to come here and dry spin, wet spin, everything imaginable um, to the dismay of the neighbors, of course. They did not like that. So over the years though, I guess people have just got a little more subtle and respectful of the surroundings. When I was a teenager, we didn't think about anybody in the neighborhood. We would just come out and do what we had to do. Uh, so I guess being rebels did not come um, now in the 2000s. That was always there, just as different than before because there wasn't really a lot of homes around here, as I said. And, um, you know, it wasn't really kept like this. As I said, it was always having rats and stuff on it, but it really turned this into a beautiful hangout area for everyone up here at South Point. Just a lovely, lovely morning. Nice neighborhood. What I'm going to do is keep quiet for a second, let you hear some of the neighborhood sounds that we have. Um, not as intense as we've had in the past, but you can enjoy them for a minute while we also look at this beautiful sunrise. I'm not sure if I have to tell you, but this is obviously a very wealthy neighborhood. Um, you know, some of these people up here have actually bought two lots just to make sure they have their privacy. For example, this home here has bought this incredible lot next to it. Now, I don't know, in the days, you know, days gone by when this has been built. Now, this would, I, I got to be guessing somewhere in the, I'd say 20 years or so ago, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, when this was actually built. You know, land up here wasn't the kind of cost it was now. Of course, in those days, you know, $100 was way more worth than what $100 is now. I mean, $100 in those days was a fortune. Nowadays, $100 is something you just go uh, to the supermarket and you walk out with a half a bike. So that just gives an indication of the value of money. However, up here, the land would not have sold as it does um, now. If you were to buy land up here, I, I wouldn't even try and guess on it. I could take a guess, a well guess, maybe in the high 20s or $30 per square foot. That'd be Barbados, so 15 to 20 US per square foot. And that is if you're lucky. Um, that's if you're lucky to find the land, first of all. Now, this was one of our main hangout spots. This is where Dr. St. John used to live. This is the St. John section. I remember here very well. We used to hang out all here. This is where we used to come and chill out. And we used to obviously have a lot of fun over there in the grass area, but lots and lots of memories. So Malcolm Hunt, if you're online this morning, my friend, 
I am taking you down a trip from your memory lane for sure. Just a quiet, peaceful neighborhood, you know, and as you can see, the homes are just beautiful. Again, we have rentals up, you know, I, I probably would be able to rent this for maybe an hour. <laughs> so, that's, it. that's all I could probably afford, an hour a month here. But if you're interested in renting in this area, you are coming down here with your family. I don't think there's anything nicer than this. And the kind of view that you will see in a few minutes time, you'll understand why I'm saying that. Rentals up in here are going to be frightfully expensive because this is a real nice area. You know, you, you have everyone around here has neighborhood watches. Um, you know, everyone around here knows their neighbor. It's that kind of neighborhood. Just beautiful. Here's another one of those lots that has been purchased by, I'm not sure if it's the home on the left or the home on the right, but it is private property and it has been purchased and it is uh, roped off so people just don't come and park on it. But this is the kind of view we're going to be seeing in a few minutes time. I had other options to walk you down different areas to overlook the, the freights and also on the, the south coast, but I'm opting to carry a little further on this morning to another one. Now, you know me, I always talk about businesses that I think are wonderful, wonderful gifts to you. You know, that offer a service and a friendliness that's second to none. Now, this is not the location of the business, but this is where Ted from Ted Tours lives. If you have ever met Ted, you have met a real Bajan. This is a man that tours similar to how I tour. He walks around in baggies, barefoot. I don't go barefoot. He got hard foot, not like me. I got baby foot, so I can't do what Ted does. And if you find him with a shirt on, it's usually a tank top. Now, what I've just described to you are his work clothes. That is how he goes to work. That is how he takes his island tours. Ted is a grassroots, down-to-earth Bajan. And he brings you a different style of touring than I would think anyone else on this island. Now, that's not putting down anyone. I've just simply said it's a different style of touring. So if you want to take Ted's tours, you can book through uh, Coconut Court Hotel. That's where you can find him. Anyone that has not seen what Ted offers, please go up on to YouTube, put in Ted's tours, Barbados, and have a look at what I'm telling you about. This man does not take your money before the tour. He has a, a, a system where he tells you, if you like your tour, you pay me after. Now, I have never heard of anyone not paying him. So that is a person that is confident of what he produces. We're gonna have to walk back out the same way, but I wanna show you the freight from a different angle. We normally see it from the other side, but I wanna show you how it looks from here. This morning I had a few guys out. This is a real long borders paradise. Um, I remember in years gone by, out here used to break all of the time. Anytime there's a south swell, freights had a swell. It was probably one of the most preferred breaks, uh, along with the drill hall on the south coast for sure. And that's because of the length of the rides. Just to give you an idea of how big and how different it is when the swell is really pumping out here, these guys are taking off right here this morning. It is a lot smaller, as you can appreciate. However, from my day, when we used to surf out here, we used to take off out there at the end of the cliff. When the big swells used to come in, that is where we used to ride from. Out of that point of that cliff, right down through this bay, straight down through the inside section, all perfect, perfect line walls. Very rarely did it close out. It was a quick break, it had different sections that you had to pick up speed for sure. If not, you would get left behind, but it was a break that you could make it right down to that beach. So you can understand the length of this ride when it pans through here. long long rides and i also remember that on occasion you used to get a right you used to break um just about center of this camera here very short and that was only if you want to take off um but if you took off on that you would have a long long paddle to get back out but there was a right that took off the center of the um, of that there and work its way into the cliff area and they used to have steps that you could go down a platform which is just about midway up that um, cliff itself not accessible i tried to get down there just now because i went on the way up to where we were starting i want to take you and let you have a look now today we're bringing you something very different, you know, um, a lot of neighborhood, not a lot of things really to talk about except for my memories and my past and to me they're golden, you know, they bring a part of Barbados that a lot of people do not hear, some don't even want to hear it, but don't mind that, I love to tell you about it, so I'm going to do it anyhow.
Thank goodness I have the control for the off. You all also do as well, but I'm going to still keep talking. So, <laughs> this is one of the real popular places to learn to surf as well. Not only for the long borders, but for anyone in general. A lot of these surf schools use here. Um, it's sheltered from the wind, so majority time, anytime is a south swell. Conditions are clean like this here. Um, it is a very easy going, relaxing break. It's not a very steep wall like a lot of the other south coast areas. Majority of the, um, well, a turtle just popped up there. I'm sure you all don't see it, but actually there's another one as well. Very, very, um, you know, densely populated with turtles out here and also skeets. You used to get a lot of skeets out here as well. Now this reef is mainly sand covered now. Originally this was a live um, flourishing reef, but a lot of sand is built in this area on this reef in years gone by now. We are looking here into Freight's Bay. Um, some people call it um, Cotton House Bay. I call it Freight's Bay as I know that is what it is, or the Freight's. Beyond there you're seeing the Lifeguard Tower, which is at the Miami Beach section, Enterprise Miami Beach. The Long Jetty at Oyston's Pier. And then you're looking down the entire coastline, you're seeing sea breeze coming into view. Um, you're seeing welcoming in view, you're seeing quite a few places all along Maxwell into Dover. Now from this angle we can look right down into Rockley, Catcra Bank and way on down, right down to Almacy Hilton, which is just barely hidden behind the last point that you would see there. But you can see the entire south coast from here. What a beautiful, beautiful view. So as I was telling you before, if you want to rent somewhere that has this kind of view, there are a lot of locations along here, but get ready to pull your pockets because these are not cheap. All right, we're on to do some more walking again, folks. I said we have to do a little backtracking, but I really wanted to see the freight this angle. I'm going to let you see it from another section that has been developed by some of the businesses in this island and also uh, maintained by some of the businesses in this island and individuals as well. I'll show you that in a minute. You have seen it before with me, but there's some people on board here that are new members who have, um, who have never seen it. And there are some people on here that don't, that are not even registered as friends or anything. So, um, you know, I want to share them as well. All right, now I told you all I hate sea grapes, but what I do love is the beige and dunk. Now, these are very, very young. These are going to be really good around December. I would say December time. They're, these do not stay the size, of course. These here look like miniature apples. Something like, you could almost say, close the size of the manchineel um, when it gets, uh, you know, it gets some that are like that. There's some about half size of the manchineel, but I have seen some as big as the manchineel itself. These are delicious fruit. Anyone that tells you these are not, please ignore them. They do not have good taste. <laughs> so, <laughs> dunks are great. I gave my girl, I call her my girl because she's my little filly. I gave my girl some dunks when she first came here. She loves them, for sure. She did not like the Aki or Guinness so much um, because I gave her some real bitter ones once. So that, that, I guess that was not a good thing to do. But anyhow, I have some pictures of her. Good morning. How are you going? Ted's guard dog. Just making sure he secures the property. Hello, doggy dog. All right, so you will be able to see how to get hold of Ted in case you don't want to call Coconut Court Hotel. I am not advertising. I am just giving you the best services that I am aware of on this island. You know, there are a lot of very, very reputable and very good tour companies in Barbados, but this is something completely completely different please look on youtube have a look at what i'm telling you about you will see what i mean lovely neighborhood just beautiful beautiful neighborhood these are smelling so lovely i don't know if you all are familiar with the scent of these but these are lovely this frangipani absolutely beautiful smell I mean, I can smell it from where I'm standing. I don't even have to go near to the flowers to smell it. Lovely. Lots of desert roses up here as well. They thrive really well in this climate. You'll find these especially along this area. A lot of people have put many big planters, so you get some very big ones. Now, I call this the wake up tree. And that is because when the sun rises, I mean, barely starts to come up. The amount of blackbirds in here must come all from the island to gather here just to awaken the sunrise because if you are walking through here it's almost deafening there's obviously later in the day now they've gone all around looking for food and stuff but if you ever walk through or ever have the opportunity to walk through here in the morning say around 5 30 quarter 6 please do that you will be amazed at the sounds that you can hear here i'm going to keep quiet let you hear a few of these sparrows are around no hear many blackbirds but you hear doves queen so here we go good morning she's on got a rock wheeler saying good morning to us let me show you. As I told you all, they're not barking at me. Guess who is out? Look on the wall. 
Chet, Chet, who's just come into view. Good morning, how are you going? Yeah, that's who they're barking at, not me. Dogs love me. I'm, I'm a dog man. I'm dog whisperer. <laughs> All right, so our quiet sounds of the birds have gone a little bit astray. But don't mind. I'll keep quiet for a minute. Let you enjoy some neighborhood sounds of Barbados. Good morning. See the wagon tails? All in there wagging their tails up, me. See? Hello, good morning. Check them, look. Calm them right down, man. That's a good spirit. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's some that don't like my spirit at all, but don't mind. I have fun with them. They're fine. I just love dogs. Growing up with dogs all my life on plantations. So, you know, having 12 and 16 and 18 dogs around you, that may sound insane, but that is how I grew up. Every stray dog that we found, we bring home. Every time they had a litter of pups, we would say we get rid of all of them. We keep at least one or two samples. <laughs> Beautiful sun, get ready people. Darker makers, please. I know one of my real good friends lives in this general area. That's Judy. Good morning, Judes. Good morning to you. Thank you for letting me walk through your neighborhood this morning. Very popular area for speed walkers and power walkers. And just the general exercise people. As you can see, that neighborhood is lovely to walk through. I mean, that's usually very peaceful in the morning. Obviously, you don't come through here talking, so the dogs are not really alerted generally, so they will keep quiet. Now, this facility, good morning, ladies. This facility here is very unusual. This used to be a cliff full of bush, dunk trees. You couldn't get down this, but this here, except for goat trap, they used to go down. This is another surfing alternative to get down to the freight bay. Oh, look at who's here again. All right, buddy. They see you, man. You ain't got to get on so. You see, that's why you don't like to introduce him, you know, because he doesn't know how to stop and behave himself. There's no reserve in him or discreetness. So, this is how high tech up here is. You've got your charging point. A charging point at this break and at this location. Just beautiful. Now, Cotton Bay window, or C window, is a project, as you can see there, it is the Scenic Barbados Trust and Tourism Development Corporation. I like to give them kudos because this place here, they said before, was nothing but bush and horrible, horrible. I mean, it was really horrible. It was densely overgrown and stuff. Um, this has all been developed over the years now. I'm going to walk you down what I'd like to call the, the, the Hall of Fame. And this is going to carry you through businesses that created it and businesses that maintain it. I'm not going to talk when I do this here. I'm going to let you do your reading. So if you want to have a look back later on, you can pause it. But I think that respects to anyone that produces a product like this here, uh, needs to be brought to the highlight. So here we go. As I said, today is going to be very different. You know, we're going to give recognition to those that deserve it in any way possible. You now, all this place has been so well designed. All of the tops, these wooden posts, which are the vulnerable areas to rot in, have been covered, as you can see, with a tin in. So the protection, the, the sight, the, the thought that went into this product is amazing. And then again, we have the Mermaid Tavern, which you're talking about. That would have been originally in Oystens, as you would remember. That's where some very do important documents were signed and these are some other information here for you i'm just going to go on this here just for a second not going to keep it here too long because you can always pause it but just in case you're interested in reading about this here all right i hope that was in focus all right now when these um normally at this time of year we were up here the other day and you all remember there was sargasm all over here and i was mentioning to you all that will go as soon as the big swell comes in well it has gone but it also has gone as the sand, but that sand has only moved a little bit offshore. 
it will come back in. So I would say in another two to three weeks, um, if there are no more big swells, here we'll have a lovely beach. Now it is, although it's not seasonal because you will find sand here all times of year, um, there are very few areas here that you can actually come and lie down on because of how, how little sand there is. However, um, around Christmas time, out here we'll have a big, beautiful beach. When I say big, it will come out to as far out as these rocks here. These rocks won't be covered with sand by any means, but you will have dry sand out to these rocks and right down in front of all these homes here. Beautiful, beautiful. We call this Freights Bay or this is Freights. And this is not a very popular surf spot as I mentioned. I'm just gonna show you um, where we just came from so you can get a, um, an understanding of where we have been walking this morning. All up here is being developed for the spectator in mind. You can come out here, have a seat, relax, there's shade out here at certain times of day. I know midday sun, you will have to get under the tree to find shade because out here it gets really, really hot. You can appreciate we're just below the cliff now. So any winds on that south, south do not get to you here really because they're coming over the cliff and sharing over the top of you. So it gets extremely hot. But you can bring your cooler down here. I've come here with my angel quite a few times. She loves this spot. She really does love this spot. It's peaceful and, and comfortable. I'm going to go down below here. I'm going to give you a 360 on this cliff section here. I'm going to try not to get wet. Have on my 4x4s. Now, as you saw, we did, we're on some coral. I like 4x4s. If I'm going to dress on, shoot, put on dress shoes or let me dress shoes. If I'm going to put on some serious work shoes, it's going to be 4x4. I'm not a mess with pumps and stuff because if I want to be able to go anywhere at all that I feel like going. Okay, here we go, folks. Enjoy this. Okay, now those that want to come here before will understand the reason why he did not come here was because here was had a reeking stench of sargasm and there were sargasm huge sargasm mounds all around that beautiful sand area there's no way that i want to display this beach that way when i can show you it like this here so that is why i will come back here later on i will probably find some shots i don't know of the bigger beach may find one or two somewhere i post them in the past but I may put up one just today. If not, you will see it at another time because I do have every intention of coming back here again. Can't find a better place to watch the sunset from. Even on the cliffs at Enterprise, which is stunning. When that tanker is not there, and I say when a tanker is not there, it sort of like fits in because that's what you will find on occasion. But when a tanker is not there and we don't have the hazy conditions, this is my favorite spot for the sunset. Right here where I'm standing. Just stunning, stunning scenery. I like to capture a lot of um, background in it as well besides just a, a, you know, a horizon and the sun setting. I like to capture cliffs, I like to capture um, buildings. That is to me more appealing than just seeing a sunset. So you'll notice that I try and do that most of the time when I do sunsets, capture boats or people or structures and that's because it tells more of a story. I believe that um, photos and vlogs should carry as much story as possible, as many points of interest and then they'll be spoken about and remembered for a very long time. You can see there are shelves of coral reef that have broken off here. Obviously the weaker matter has been eaten out and these have dropped off over the years. I just got soaked. Just want to tell you that right up to my knees, but don't mind. I will put these shoes in the sun as soon as I get home and we'll be good to go by Monday again if necessary. All right, we're going to make our way a little further on. I haven't finished yet. I mean, you all may be tired of hearing me talk, but do like some of my friends and put on some Bob Marley or something and jam in the background while I'm walking and just taking the scenery. I know there's one of my friends who actually rides their exercise bicycle while viewing these vlogs because while we're strolling, they're riding and getting in some mileage and some putting over some, dropping off some calories and some pounds, getting some fitness, just beautiful. All right, we're going back up these steps again. So we're going to take our time going up. We've shown you all the names of the companies coming down. 
So we're just going to make our way back up. You can see it's a, a very strong, smartly thought out structure. Everything here has been done with a reason and for a purpose. It is just lovely. Now we talked about dunks before. Now you see, here we go again. These are much bigger ones. These are a different, they're all different types of dunks, but most of them can be real bitter. But these are beautiful. So here we go again. So different types of, just like the sea grape, you will get different um, ripening times. You know, you can go to different sections of the island depending on the rainfall or the climatic conditions, and you will find um, dunks ripening at different times. D different, different shapes, you know, different coloring, very, very different. Some are woody, some are very bitter, some are lovely. It's beautiful up here though, very, very beautiful. Now if you're a person that can't really do a lot of walking and are challenged by walking, you can just come, <laughs> yes sir, you can just come up on this cliff, have a seat and take in this type of beauty. Now I know there are a lot of trees here, but imagine when you start to mature and grow higher, um, you'll be able to look right under them, see all that scenery as well. Just beautiful. Lots of renovations have gone on here over the last few years. This used to be a little single story. Apartments used to rent, very, very basic. And look at how it's been developed. What a beautiful, beautiful accommodation. Now, this whole home would be built from the top elevation. We we'll look right over all the trees here and right down the south coast as well. Just stunning. Now, we've done this walk before. I just want to take you on a little a little more walk just to show you the enterprise cliffs a little more um, we've done that before as well but today is Saturday we're gonna close this week with a nice stroll in the neighborhood just talking in general now I remember this house here when it was very small I don't know how many of you um, just to give you an, an idea of the time I'm talking about I don't know how many of you remember Maxie Taylor Maxie was a drummer for Ivory the Mary Boys originally and this is where he used to live I remember being a young teenager hanging out here with Maxie and Doris at this home on the deck looking at freights going off it has been developed considerably because the original structure was here was lost a fair years ago and someone has taken over and put some serious investment into it more dunk trees all over here so <laughs> this one doesn't have on any at all so that one hasn't even started a battle yet now we have surf schools um mobile surf schools in this island that don't actually operate from their base so it'll take all of the board and equipment and all their guests, if there are guests that go with them or meet them on point. But this is one that's located right here. This is a surf school that's open every day. I'm gonna give you the times in a minute when I look at the board, I can't remember what they are. So I wanna make sure I give you the correct information. But they have a beautiful location and they're, they will operate from here. They also have a shop here as well. So if you want wax or anything like that. Um, okay, we now see their board, so I can now call it correctly. Let me get a little closer and make sure I don't give you the wrong information. Nah, seriously, they're 8, 8 30 until 4. And just in case you want to come here and rent boards, want to get lessons or anything else, as I said, we always talk about those places that are en route that I can definitely recommend. I would most definitely recommend this place. I'll just stop for a second for you to get the information from here in case you're a surfer or you've never surfed and you want to try it. There are so many people that come to Barbados that have never even been in the sea but know how to swim and will come here and learn how to surf because these guys are going to take you through the lessons from scratch. They're going to teach you how to stand up on a board. They're going to teach you everything while you're here. So if you want to come and try something brand new on a vacation you've never done before, I don't care what age you are. Look, I'm 60 years old, I still get any water and I have some friends that are close to 70 like Snake, for example, over in Bashwa, Snake still surfs every day. And in some good size surf as well too. You know my friend Trot, he's in his mid 60s. He surfs still, all the guys still surf because surfing is a freedom. Surfing brings a youth with it. It is an amazing, amazing freedom. You're using and harnessing the power of nature to enjoy yourself. Just an amazing experience. So if you've never surfed in your life, I don't mind if you think that you're too old for this. That's not so. You can come and try it at any level. All are offered, all the levels. Lots of little condos and uh, Airbnb rentals up in this area as well. So again, if you want to stay somewhere on this side of the island, that is also available. 
Beautiful. Lots and lots of renovations have gone on over the years for sure. I remember when I was a teen again, into my early 20s, this ramp here where they have the mirror now was what we used to term as our wave. It was a lot steeper than this here. We used to drive up on that at ridiculous speeds and curve off of the lip and come back down. So up here you would have found tire traps everywhere. You're still seeing some right here, but the mirror, just before the mirror where someone is, comes up and then comes off of it. So we don't just surf in the sea, we surf on land too. So <laughs> Malcolm, I'm passing your gap, brother. So let this memory just flow, buddy. I know the kind of memories you have here of all your childhood, because I know this is where you grew up, where you live for most of your life. Beautiful. All right, now a public access to that same beach we were at just now. Um, it's just down these steps here. You know, opposite what is known as Cotton House. And you make your way down these steps here. Not much beach at the moment, especially with this um, surge that's going on and the high swells. Now, when these condos were built over on the right-hand side, a strange thing happened in Barbados. When I say strange thing, it was not the norm. And that is they purchased the property on the left for all of their residents. And they set up a beach facility not a beach facility, but maybe a cliff facility. Let's term it that rather than a beach because there ain't no beach here. But all of the changing rooms, showers, everything are over here as well. So if you own, rent or lease a property in this section, you have the facilities over on the water side as well on the cliff. Just beautiful. Now comes one of many of my friends' favorite spots for sunsets, uh, for general viewing, for relaxation, for peace, and for stunning beauty. And that's called the Enterprise Cliffs. This is where we're gonna finish our tour today. Um, we're gonna do a 360 a little further on down when we get down to the benches. We were here a couple of weeks ago, but we certainly didn't do a walking tour of it. So let us enjoy it and enjoy this beauty. I'm gonna keep myself quiet. Let you listen to all these lovely fresh breezes are blowing and feel the sunshine that's hitting me in my back. It's just beautiful this morning. Here we go. I did promise you quietness, but I will say, I think because of the concerns um, on Facebook, I'm not sure what they're about, but there definitely have been some concerns and challenges for some of the members of the last few days when we refer to the Shadow Man. So we're gonna do what, um, we're gonna go back to what our conductor originally called that crazy puppet and call him the 10 foot man. So from now on, that will be our reference and hopefully that will eliminate any more problems with that. So the 10 foot man, is out here annoying me. Now I know that we have some members on here that do yoga up here. So I'm not sure if they're here and it, maybe they are. We're gonna see in a few minutes. It's beautiful. So a lot of yoga, a lot of med meditation, just relaxation goes on out here. Just beautiful area. How are you this morning? I was hoping to see you here, you're good? Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. You saying hello to everybody this morning? Hi. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. It's great to see you. Lovely. Thanks to meet you again, huh? Take care. Have a lovely session. Okay, take care. So as you see our EMC family is all over. And as she always says, she comes here and does her yoga. So so happy to run into her this morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning here in Barbados. You see how the cliff has dropped away over the years? This happens, you can see that there is some weaker matter here um, that has just broken off. And this happens all along here, you will find these boulders, especially if you're swimming along this waterfront area. I've done a lot of snorkeling here in the past. It's quite lovely. There are many entrances to get to, well, I should say many ways, I won't say entrances, many ways to get to this sea. Um, there are steps all along this cliff area, not just at Miami Beach, but there are rough old steps that were cut in the past. Because as I had mentioned before, that beach you're seeing, did not exist. You see, you used to go right up and hit the cliffs at the back of Miami Beach and Enterprise Beach. So that is all new and that was because of the Coast Guard station that was set up there. Um, by putting the groin out and they used to have the station on the lower side. However, the build up of sand and stuff in that area um, obviously made no sense to keep that there and they relocated. But it's left a beautiful, beautiful beach. Now, 
and in 2015, 16, 18, earlier this year, but especially in 15 and 16, you would have had 10 to 12 foot mounds of sargasm on that beach. It was so bad that the government had to bring in um, tractors and uh, bulldozers and bat holes to take the moss off the beach, which destroyed a lot of the benches and stuff down there. It was an absolute mess. However, they cleaned it up beautifully. And then we were again, uh, and as you can see, it's come back in an incredible way. Although we've had sargasm this year, it was fairly heavy, nothing like we've had in the past. So folks, I hope you all have enjoyed today. I have had a wonderful time. It's been very different from what we've offered in the past. Um, you know, it's different. It's a neighborhood walk. You know, I've been able to run my mouth. I am happy. My jaws are comfortable. My tongue is feeling extremely relaxed and I'm having a wonderful time. But this is just the power here you can see of some of the swells are coming in. This is obviously a little set that's rolling through. Up here, a day ago or two days ago, must have been just incredible. All right, we can do our 360 here, as I promised you. I'm not gonna forget that this time, although I almost did. Here we go. Darker makers, please enjoy this silence. <laughs> we'll see. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining me this morning. It has been a pleasure with you this entire week. It's actually a pleasure with you all every day. You know, their Sundays are extra, extra special. That I go home and I say to myself, boy, I had the best day of my life. And that happens so often. I have so many best days of my life and almost all of them are. Um, but then there's some I go home and say to myself, well, not too sure today went. And then when I sit down and read the comments, I realize it's only me that felt that way. And that's because I'm judging myself and because I'm trying to maybe think that I should have offered something different rather than just accepting what God has given me and appreciating that what happens is what's supposed to happen. You know, that's it very much like everything in my life, you know. Um, my life has changed tremendously. My life was never really like this here. I was always a, a kind person, I think, and a nice person, I think, but my life has changed because I live for God now and what God wants and what God desires and what I do. And that is to bring the happiness and the peace and the joy and the hope, especially in these times. These times are very, very trying for us all, not just trying for me and not just trying for you, whoever's watching this here trying for everyone no matter how much money we have no matter what financial status we have no matter how many properties we own these are tough tough times and you know and it's the people that sometimes are more accustomed to money and more accustomed security that feel it more than anyone else because the person that doesn't have anything in life doesn't have anything to justify or uh, uh, not justify doesn't have anything to compare it to so you know they're able to adapt to some of these situations However, times now are really, really tough. So remember, everyone around you, no matter how they may look, no matter the smiles they may carry, may not be the actual way that they are. You know, those smiles can be all just put on to make you feel that life is great. But it's not that great for everyone. So if you can reach out today, love someone, touch someone, show someone the peace and the kindness and the love that you feel from this morning, you will help this world be a much better place for tomorrow. I hope you all had a fantastic day with me. You can see the ladies are all getting themselves ready for the yoga classes. What a beautiful, beautiful setting. I'm just gonna leave you with this view. I'm gonna say to you all, I love you all. Um, you know, this is the beauty of Barbados through my eyes. I am the Beijing warrior. Everybody knows I am God's warrior for peace, love, kindness, happiness, anything that's positive in this life. That's what makes my day worth living. Have a fantastic day, everyone. I love you all. Be peaceful, be kind, be safe, and God spare life. Monday morning we will start our adventures again. If anything crops up over the over tomorrow that I think you all need to see, trust me, you all will see it. Have a great day. Love you all. Peace and love from Barbados.